Right then, it's a sunny weekend just for shits and giggles. Let's go and see what sort of 0 to 60 times we'll get out of uh, a 12 year old, is it? Uh, 170,000 mile TDV8 with, uh, with a torque converter that's probably on its last legs. Let's go and see how quick it is. To be honest, I'm not really into uh, doing speed runs and stuff, but uh, if you've got even an ounce of petrol head in you, you always wonder, how quick is it? You know, I know it's a beast that's nearly three tons heavy. Um, and uh, I'm about to get uh, my, my summer car out uh, any day now, but uh, it's just, uh, let's just see what it's capable of. Give you an idea, won't it, if you're buying uh, what, uh, a TDB8 uh, L322 that's in a lot of life, is it gonna be nippy? I'll be honest, when I'm driving it, uh, I don't really care how quickly it gets up to 60. It pulls away and overtakes, no bother. Um, it's got plenty of torque. If, um, if I had to sort of give it uh, a little bit of criticism, I'd say because the torque converter isn't its freshest, pulling away from standstill is where it struggles, where you're going from using all, where you need to use all the torque to go from zero up to any kind of uh, speed. So uh, where it's needing to convert most torque, it's not uh, performing its best. But when it's already rolling and you've got some momentum and uh, you're on an A road and you want to overtake, no problem. When on, on the motorway, one overtakes one, no problem. Uh, yeah, let's go and see what it'll do. <laughs> So there you go. In terms of power and acceleration, uh, I can still feel the engine is bulletproof. Feels great, uh, really, but 0 to 60 times a bit lacking. If you're going to do 0 to 60s on twisty roads with old tyres and a torque converter that is surely wants changing, really, if I can uh, drop the gearbox and get it done. Um, 10 seconds ish, you know, not too bad, really. Uh, I'm sure it's probably towards 8 seconds from the factory. So, you know, a couple of seconds uh, with a dodgy torque converter and old tyres. Uh, I also had some gear in the boot as well uh, that uh, probably weighed about another person's weight. So, you know, yeah, it's a very rough guide as to how slow or quick an old Range Rover's going to be. Uh, but actually, in practice on the road, it really does overtake people. There's some big hills really uh, around where I live. And I can accelerate up these hills like there's no tomorrow. There's no, uh, there's no lack of power in the perception when I'm driving it. Um, but from a standing start, getting that torque to get the wheels moving, it is, what is it, 2.7 tonnes, if I remember right? That's a lot of, that's a lot of momentum to build. So uh, you can probably tell from looking at the, those little 0 to 60 blasts, it gets moving rather slowly. Once you've hit about 30 miles an hour, You've got a bit of momentum and then the, the, the powertrain just sort of kicks in and keeps uh, keeps you going once the turbos are uh, both spooling at once. So, um, yeah, I'd say overtaking is actually all right. It's nothing to be overly concerned about once you're moving. If you wanted to beat people off the lights, don't don't buy it. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's not that kind of car. But if you want to sit back uh, like the old man that I'm becoming now and uh, enjoy the enjoy the ride from a nice, high, comfortable position, and overtake people as and when you need to, perhaps on the motorway, then it's great for that. <laughs> 